December 21st. You know what that means, right? Well, according to the calendar, aside from the fact that it's the winter solstice and it's the shortest day of the year, it doesn't really mean much. Except for the fact that it means we have 10 days till December 31st, which we all know what that is. New Year's Eve. What does New Year's Eve represent? Well, again, it's kind of an arbitrary day that humans just make up, but it's really significant in a sense of turning the page, brand new year, that kind of thing. What do we do for New Year's Eve? Two things come to mind. We party, and a lot of us, we make resolutions. Try to come up with something that we're gonna change or fix or do differently or quit or stop or start new in the new year. And I, I was gonna kind of really encourage you to do something different this year. What I wanna encourage you to do is instead of just party and come up with a resolution that you may not even stick to or doesn't really matter, do something different. Two things, do two things a little bit differently than what you maybe done in the past, what most people do. First of all, instead of making a brand new resolution, something that maybe you might stick to, you might not, something new, something else to do in the new year, on top of everything you try to do this year, instead of looking forward to the next year in terms of what you're gonna do to add to your plate, just take the next 10 days to first of all, Reflect a little bit. Think back over the past year, 2015, and reflect on some of the lessons that you've learned. That's really what I wanna encourage you to do. Instead of just charging into the new year and taking all of the baggage and maybe all of the things that went on in 2015 and not really having any organization or structure to them, Maybe take the next 10 days before New Year's Eve gets here and reflect a little bit about 2015. Think about some of the things that you learned, some of the lessons. Because I think that the most important thing we can do moving forward when it comes to the past, and that's what 2015 will be here shortly, is learn from what we've already done. You know, people often talk about mistakes, and I'm sure that most of us have, can look back and say we made a few mistakes this year, but a mistake is, is nothing more than hindsight. You know, nobody goes into a situation and says, I'm gonna go make a mistake right now. That's not how it works. A mistake is what we label something after we're already done and we have more information after the fact to look back and say, oh yeah, that was a mistake. Well, instead of doing that, at the time that you took that action, it's, it wasn't, it was with your best intentions. But hindsight says, you know, I could have or I should have or I would have done that differently and not made that mistake. Take the next 10 days to think back over this past year. What are some of the mistakes that you made? What are some of the lessons that you learned? What are some of the things that you kind of figured out over the year or things that you look back on and you kind of want to fix or do differently or change? Also take some time to reflect a little bit and remember some of the things that you want to take with you. Maybe you traveled somewhere. Maybe you met somebody that was very important or very special. Maybe you participated in some sort of an event or something that was really monumental in your life. These kind of things are things that I think that we can take the time now and reflect on and take with us. So look back at some of the baggage or some of the maybe negative experiences that you had in the year of 2015. Look at what the lessons are. What did you learn from those situations? Did you learn anything about the people around you? Did you learn anything about yourself? Maybe you had a financial situation and you learned a lot. You know, you were short on money and, and maybe you were even in debt. And, kind of learned a few things about money. Maybe it was a relationship. Learned a lot about a relationship in 2015 or you learned some really good um, lessons there, or intense lessons there. Maybe it was at work. Maybe it was with your job. Maybe you learned something about your coworkers or about employees or about how business works. Uh, maybe it was personal growth. Maybe you learned something about yourself. Maybe you evolved and you grew a little bit because of an experience that you had. But try to remember and reflect back to those moments, to those things, those times, to these situations that maybe you can build on and take with you into the new year. One of the things we can do with a new opportunity to have a fresh, clean slate or moving into the future is we can think about an opportunity to forgive. And what do I mean by that? Well, moving away from 2015 and into 2016, again, it's just another day. 31st to the 1st, it'll just be another day. But sometimes we need to package things and kind of compartmentalize them a little bit and put them somewhere into a certain place so that we can move on for the, with the rest of our lives. And forgiveness is something that you can do for yourself to be able to move on. Maybe there's somebody or something that happened in 2015 or somebody in your life that maybe hurt you or you were upset or um, something that you've been carrying around on your shoulders, maybe some negative energy that you've wanted to let go of for some time now. And maybe you're, you're about ready. Maybe you're, you're about there and you say, you know what, I'm gonna use this opportunity. 2016 is gonna be a year where I forgive so-and-so or I forgive um, you know, this experience, I, I put this behind me, and I cut ties with those, the negative energy that, that's kind of been consuming me from that thing. The new year is an opportunity to do that, but you need to reflect back on 2015 and find out who is it that I want to forgive? 
What is it? And you don't have to call them up and forgive them. You can just make that declaration on your own within yourself and say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let go. And in 2015, I'm going to leave this baggage. I'm going to leave this negative energy. I'm going to let go of all of my focus on something negative or somebody negative um, that's just a part of my past at this point. And I'm going to take that energy and I'm going to move it into something positive in the new year. So the new year is also an opportunity to forgive and to Think back on something that we want to leave behind us and compartmentalize it and package it up in a healthy way. So forgiveness is maybe something that you could look forward to or you could look for, uh, take advantage of over the next 10 days or so by reflecting and figuring out what exactly you want to let go of, cut ties with, and move into the new year without. So think about the lessons that you've learned. Look back at some of the experiences that you've had to take those good times with you or whatnot. Look at the personal growth that you've made and maybe consider forgiveness. What else do I want you to do? Don't just reflect. That's the first thing I wanted you to do. Reflect, and if you do make a resolution, make sure that your resolution for the new year is congruent and in line with some of the lessons that you learned or some of the things you picked up on that you reflected from in 2015. So if you learned a lesson or something was really a valuable lesson was taught to you or something was really made aware or you were enlightened about something, take that information, that knowledge, and then piggyback that onto a resolution maybe and make it even stronger going into the new year. You don't want to have conflicts or misunderstandings or you know something that you're not really you haven't really uh, put behind you or resolved in the past with issues or circumstances or or whatnot and then yet still go make a whole nother resolution on top of that. It only makes sense to resolve the issues you've had before you make an absolute resolution to do something new moving into the future. So um, I think that when you look at your resolutions, your new year resolutions, try to piggyback those if you have them on some of the things that you've reflected on for 2015. Because I know that the 2015 taught you a bunch of lessons and it's real easy to just put it behind us, wipe, you know, sweep it under the rug and, and put it out of sight, out of mind type of thing and pretend like it doesn't exist and new, new year, new me type of thing. But you know, new year, same you, just different day on the calendar. And if you try to pretend like 2015 didn't exist or it's behind you, it's part of the past now, you may lose some valuable lessons that could assist you and really help you in 2016. So reflect, remember, learn from the lessons and the mistakes and the things that have gone on, mistakes that have gone on in 2015. That's the first thing I want you to do. The second thing I want you to do is don't just party on New Year's Eve. After you take the time to reflect over the next 10 days on some of these things that have gone on, and you focus on some of the things that you could learn from, you could do better, you wanna do better, you wanna improve upon, after you've done that, along with looking at the lessons that you maybe have learned, I also want you to look at some of the things that you've accomplished, some of the goals you've attained, some of the things you've achieved, again, how much you've grown, things like this. And what I want you to do is, over the next 10 days, make a mental note or write them down, become aware of what it is that you did in 2015 that you're proud of, that you're happy about, that you want to continue to build on. And on the 31st, don't just party, but celebrate absolutely celebrate all of those things. Whatever that accomplishment, that achievement, that growth is, whatever it is, wherever you feel like you've made progress in your life, on the 31st, don't just go party with everybody else. Go celebrate among everybody who's partying. And I say that because I make a distinct difference between partying and celebrating. Partying is just something you do in the moment, just kind of indulge, pleasure, hedonism, just there. Celebrating is with an intention. It's partying with an intention. When you celebrate, you party with an intention. There's an intent behind celebrating. And if you know me, you know all I'm, up, I'm all about three things, purpose, passion, and pursuit. And when I say purpose, live with purpose, meaning live on purpose, live with intention, live with meaning, and do what you do for a reason. And when I celebrate, I'm celebrating something specific, something in particular. And we all need to do that. We need to celebrate our accomplishments. We shouldn't be partying every single day if we have no reason to be celebrating anything, because that can be distracting, that can be a problem. But we absolutely need to celebrate. See, when we celebrate, it serves as a reinforcer. We absolutely lock in, and we we are basically programming ourselves to realize that when you do work very hard, when you do accomplish something, there are rewards for it. And we do deserve that. And that pleasurable feeling is something that it kind of compels us to keep moving forward once again and to keep moving and to keep going to try and accomplish even more. So we have to make sure we take the time to celebrate. If you just are a hard worker and you're consistently trying to achieve goals, you're consistently trying to accomplish things and working on things, you'll burn out. You have to take the time to reward yourself, to really enjoy the fruits of your labor, to use a cliche, to be cliche about it, but it's true and we do need to celebrate. So what you can do is, nobody will know what you're doing unless you tell them. So no matter what you do on the 31st, no matter who you're with or where you are, whether you're out and about or you're home with some family and friends, you can do it with intention. 
When you have that glass of champagne, that glass of water, do it with purpose, do it with meaning, and be thinking about what it is that you're reflecting on and you're really anchoring in the feelings of satisfaction and gratification and fulfillment about that you've done over the past year. So reflect on the year, try to pull some of those things over the next 10 days, and then really go with intention on the 31st to anchor in and lock in those things. I really would encourage you to do that because before you know it, it's going to be 2016 and 2015 is going to be seem like light years behind us and you'll have a whole new set of challenges in front of you, a whole new set of lessons that life is going to offer you. But I really want you to take the next 10 days to reflect, to think back and really kind of empower yourself moving forward with whatever it was that the universe handed you and gave you during 2015. So again, over the next 10 days, simply put, just reflect a little bit, think back over the course of 2015, think about the highs, think about the lows, think about the lessons you've learned, consider some of the accomplishments, the achievements, things you want to build on that you're really, really proud about, that you're happy about, that you deserve to celebrate. And then on the 31st, celebrate those things. Really celebrate all the things that you reflected on. And you can also look forward to what you're going to do and how you're going to improve upon those areas of your life in 2016. And that'll be a great transition, I think. You'll take some lessons that you've learned from 2015 and really build on who you are, your character. You'll grow a little bit. You'll expand. You'll be a little bit more enlightened. And then you'll also be empowered to take on whatever 2016 uh, brings you, brings us, and you'll be uh, really more prepared for that challenge. So consider these things. I really encourage you to take the next 10 days. You got 10 days. It's not here yet. It's still 2015. Think about it. Reflect. Think back. Consider something maybe different each day. And then when the 31st gets here, really with purpose and intention, and you can share it when you share it with people, you know, ask people, what are they, what are they celebrating? What are they, what are they happy about? What did they accomplish? You know, what are they looking forward to building on that they accomplished in 2015? Really live with purpose and anchor that in. So reflect, remember, consider forgiveness, letting go of the negative energy, contemplate on some things that you've maybe expanded in some areas you've expanded on, whether it be personally or with your relationships or just in your life somewhere in general. Consider those things and then really celebrate them on the 31st. That's my message to you. That's what I want to encourage you to do. And I think that this is something that you can do that will really help expand you as an individual that maybe you were going to already. Maybe you were, you know, already had the intention to do that. But I just want to catch you just in case you plan on just going out and partying on the 31st and then turning that page and not really taking anything with you. When I know you can, I know you've made some accomplishments. I know you've made some great gains in 2015 that you might not really be aware of. And hey, Life's short. We want to take all the lessons and all the things we've accomplished with us. We want to build on whatever strengths that we have. We don't want just 2015 to just go away and we lose some opportunity there. So take the next 10 days, think about it, reflect on it, celebrate it on the 31st. If this video resonated with you, if you like this message and you think you know somebody who could maybe benefit from this, please share it. Subscribe to my page, uh, my YouTube page. Click the link for my website. You can follow me on social media. Obviously, stay tuned. Subscribe to my mailing list. I'm going to be putting out a lot more content like this in the new year. So until next time, which will be in 2016, live with purpose, find your passion, and pursue whatever it is that you want to do. Take care.